So when you're on a first date, should you discuss politics? Is discussing with, you know, someone that you're just starting to date, who you're voting for, who you voted for in the past, something that should be brought up on a first date or at all? If you know you don't want to be with someone who has family members or has Trump supporters or supports Trump themselves, and that person shares that, I think it's totally fine to find that disqualified. Why didn't you tell me this up front? Why, why did you have to wait till I like you for you to drop the baggage on me, right? And I'm speaking from, like a guy's, from a guy's standpoint, you know? I'm pretty sure women have done the same. But when that happens, then it's like, well, who's really that fault? Was I supposed to volunteer information or were you supposed to ask the necessary questions? Welcome back to Eight at the Table. It's your boy Rico. We also got Amanda and we also have two great guests with a tremendous amount of accolades in their profession. Yeah, so let's first introduce them. Um, so we have Crystal over here to my right. All right, my name is Crystal Jordan and I am a author and journalist, but I think I learned a lot about entertainment from being a celebrity publicist. I had a company in Atlanta for about 15 years, it was one of the top entertainment publicity uh, firms in the Southeast. Um, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of celebrities, a lot of brands, and do some really cool stuff. And then transitioned out of that and went back into journalism, which I love. So currently, I serve as editor for Rolling Out. I serve as a senior features editor for, a senior features writer for Collider, and also um, editor-in-chief for Lennox and Parker. So I write all the time. <laughs> um, I also have a YouTube channel that is focused specifically on relationships, specifically celebrity relationships and black love. So I talk about that at nauseum, but I love it because I believe in the power of love. Um, I have a best-selling book that came out last year titled Dear Alpha Female, It's Not Him, It's You. That book created a lot of controversy, but I welcome controversy because I think that we have to um, acknowledge things in order to get past them and get better. And so I am super excited because my new dating book is coming out um, May 2024. So next month. And that book is titled um, How to Go from Business to Bay. And it's basically like giving you dating tips on career for career women on how to date. Mm-hmm. So I'm okay. super, super excited um, about that and just looking forward to the conversation. Well, thank Business you for joining today. us. Mm-hmm. Business to Bay. Business to Bay. Mm-hmm. Cute. Mm. Yep. How to turn it off and turn him on. <laughs> <laughs> and we like to be turned on, you know. <laughs> we also have Ested. Ested. Yeah, Ested Herndon. I am a <laughs> politics reporter at the New York Times. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I host the New York Times politics podcast. It's called The Run Up. Um, I uh, have been a journalist, a political journalist for a while now. I started my career at the Boston Globe um, where I first wrote about like um, crime and murders and fires and, and oh, drug overdoses, all those like very classic newspaper stuff. Um, and then I started doing politics things. Uh, so did the city council, but then Trump was running. And so I got involved in some of that uh, journalism. And then when he won, they moved me to DC to cover um, uh, the Trump election in DC. And so I was there like in the room when you know, Spicer and Scaramucci and Kellyanne Conway and all that stuff. And uh, then I actually ended up uh, joining the New York Times in 2018. And I actually um, went from D.C. to doing elections. So I covered the presidential election and I was the New York Times reporter for Elizabeth Warren's campaign or Kamala Harris's campaign. I go to Trump rallies uh, and I had doing that in the paper. So writing stories about that all through 2020. Um, And then a couple years ago, we started a podcast. And so it's called The Run Up. And it's about taking all of those ideas about the political system and all the things we learned on the road to really apply it to this election and to try to do it in a way that gets people more engaged um, and speaks in a language that's really accessible. And so, um, you know, that's been my journalism career. I'm also an analyst for CNN, so I do TV stuff. Um, And uh, work has been in a lot of places, New York Times Magazine, um, you know, finalists for Pulitzer, Toner Prizes, things like that. So 
Um, but I'm also from Chicago, from the suburbs of Chicago. Um, came over here like six, eight years ago and really feel like passionate about turning that politics stuff into the type of things that look and sound like the people I really taught me to care about politics. So um, that's part of the reason I'm here too. Well, thank you both. I actually, I'm excited for what we're going to talk about today. Um, I'm going to let Amanda go ahead and introduce the topic. Okay. So it's a good one. So I, I feel like, cause we have a little bit of business and dating going on in politics. So our topic for today is, um, so when you're on a first date, should you discuss politics? Is discussing with you know someone that you're just starting to date, who you're voting for, who you voted for in the past, something that should be brought up on a first date or at all? I would definitely say, according to my dating etiquette book, that is not something that you should do on a first date. I think that <laughs> my <laughs> advice to women specifically, because that's who my my uh, content is usually geared towards, is you your you know a first date should be fun. It should allow him to see the best sides of you. When people get into conversations about politics and religion specifically, they tend to become very passionate, and you could end up showing him a side of you that you may not. I mean, it's not necessary for a first date. So I think my advice is always to keep things light. You pay attention and listen, but you really want the person to talk about themselves and you want to talk about yourself as opposed to things that are outside of just, are you guys compatible? Do you like each other? Yeah. And arguing about a political candidate does not necessarily have anything to do with your personality. Now that may be something you want to bring up later because we know politics is, especially now, right now, it really shapes the way we live our lives. But I think on a first date for a woman, I just want you to go and have fun. I want you to feel, feel, you know, be in all your feminine energy. I want you to feel pretty and just and allow him to see the softer side of you and arguing about politics is not the way to go. I got a question for you, Crystal. Okay. What if we had a great date? Okay. Hour and a half, 90 minutes. Yeah. Right. We went out somewhere. We both had a great time. Mm -hmm. You know, we had just, Everything was, all the boxes were being checked off. Right. And then at the end of the day, well, I'm about to drop you off at your house. I'm like, hey, so who'd you vote for? <laughs> <laughs> would that be a bad farewell? That would be a really bad farewell. That would be a bad farewell because number one, you've just stopped. The energy has shifted, right? And I think that it becomes, sometimes people can, we can disagree, if we already like each other, it's easier for us to disagree about something without taking things personal. I don't know you very well. And you say something, I don't really understand you. I don't know the context in which you speak. You could be joking. You could say, who you vote? Who did you vote for? And that to you could be something that's a joke and fun. If I have very strong beliefs and I'm triggered, I could take it in a totally different way. And I could respond in a way that would be totally inappropriate for the way you ask. Yeah. So I would, I think that changes the energy and it would definitely um, be a red flag. Who would you vote for as a joke? That's how you joke? <laughs> like, That's that Gemini's joke like that, actually. Some people, we don't. <laughs> no one jokes like that. But I think, I think now because of, because of how polarizing the, the political landscape is, I do think that, and some people at this point are frustrated and think it's a joke. And so a lot of a lot of the candidates have said things that are very in a joking manner that are not funny. Right. So I think that sometimes people could say something like, you know, obviously we know that Trump said a lot of off color things. If someone brought up something that he said in a joking manner, someone else could take it extremely offensively. Like you bring up the fact that the former president of the United States said grab him by the pussy. And then the woman has a history <laughs> of like sexual abuse. Like that's a bad thing. So I just yeah. think. Yeah. This is not a, a a territory that we want to go into on a first or second day. You really just want to get to know the person and let them get to know you and then start to peel back the layers. That's a process. We don't need to peel the onion all the way yeah. <laughs> for right. the first 90 minutes. I mean, I definitely think you should put your best foot forward. And that usually doesn't include politics or religion or things like that. But I also think that everything is political, you know? Mm -hmm. Who did you vote for is not the only political question. Yeah. And so it does feel like if that's something that matters to you, like it's it's going to be hard to uh, take that out. Yeah. Right. And so, um, you know, when people ask, what do you do? 
And I say I work in an election, right? Like I write about an election. Yeah. But in the same way, I don't want to sit around and talk about that all day on the day. You know, like I'm not, that doesn't mean to me that we have to talk about that. Mm -hmm. But it's also, and they're obviously a part of your day to day. It's a part of who you are. It's a part of the stuff you care about. Yeah. And so I'm saying all of those things matter. But I think there's ways to talk about those things without it being, okay, who did you vote for? But at the same time, if you're someone who that matters for, like if, if, if religion, is core to who what you do mm -hmm. why i mean why hide it like you know like yeah. if that might not be the person across from you and whether you go to date three or whether it's right now yeah mm -hmm. if you know that that's a deal breaker for you then get it out the way early i guess i had a bad experience with the religion question and i just mentioned that i was a christian that's it <laughs> and <laughs> It 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 went so bad. But what happened is, like I was saying, some people can be triggered. So this particular guy that I dated to this day, and I didn't take the name out of my phone because I'm married. I'm not dating anymore. But I just wanted to make sure I would never answer the phone. When he heard the word Christian, he got triggered. His sister had passed away and he blamed God for it. Right. And so he literally went on a I mean, he just verbally attacked me on how Jesus that you believe in Jesus. And this, I mean, he just went. It was so horrible and i and i i understood it was coming from a painful place but he attacked me on a first date yeah be, just because i said i was a christian i didn't even go into because there's christianity is like there's a lot of different explanations and definitions of it but he was so and it was because he was coming from a from just had gotten out of an experience that he blamed god for so it turned into an attack. And so I just learned like just Yeah, but that's not just about religion. That's about respect too, right? Like there's no reason to do that. There was yeah. no reason to do that. Like it's not an excuse. You need a heal. I think yeah. that, like, <laughs> I think that with today's um current climate on just dating and having children not married, I think that these type of questions are essential as fast as possible. Yeah. Um you know what I'm saying? Because there's so many kids that are being born out of wedlock, which means they're they're not fully committed relationships yet uh, to some, right? Uh, um, but what ends up happening is if you do or were to accidentally have a child <laughs> and you're Christian and you're Muslim and now we're like, where are we p placing this kid's faith and beliefs? Yeah. And then it becomes a tug of war battle. Um, and I've seen it. You know, I've seen it happen, you know, especially when we're talking about kids that are now having sex at 22, 23, 24, and they don't really even, you know, have a real footing on where their faith is and where their right. even uh, political stances or views are. And then next thing you know, they're dating and they're having sex and they're, they're having unprotected sex. And now you bring a child into this world and now you have to figure out a way to continue this relationship. But now you're starting to unpack the real stuff, um, which is the two questions that they told us to never ask the religion and politics. So maybe you need to ask that. So like, maybe that needs to be a rule as opposed to the first date. Maybe before you, before you have sex with someone. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There was time. <laughs> what if it's the first date? Yeah. yeah. There's gotta be date some time. One. Now there may not, and, there may not be time in between sex. the liberated movement. There may, you may end up having sex on the first date, but if you're going to have sex on the first date, then you may, you know, you have a right to ask some additional questions. Yeah, or at least unprotected sex for sure. I don't think you should hide who you are on a first date, but I think you should definitely, I think there's a time and a place for everything, right? So for me as just a woman, Crystal, Danielle, Jordan Jennings, there's different pieces of me, right? So there's the work crystal that is very no nonsense, right? There's the mother crystal that's very nurturing and, 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 and cared about her babies. There's the wife crystal that's, you know, just loves her husband and loves the love of love. Like, I don't need to show everybody all those different sides. So if I'm going on a date with someone that I don't know, that is a stranger, I definitely don't think he needs to see the no nonsense work crystal show up. I think that's what a lot of women do incorrectly. And that is a turnoff because he, yes, that person exists and she's a part of my the, my, the collective of who I am, but that's not who he's going to be interacting with. I think that you show up on a date authentically in the space of a person wanting to get to know someone else. I don't know you. I need to get to know you. So I'm showing you the flirtatious side, the fun side. Now, later, you will get to know the mother. You will get to know the friend. You will get to know the daughter, all these different people. But I don't want to bring all that to a first date. I think it's overwhelming. And I think that there is danger in oversharing. 
like, for instance, if you went through a very traumatic, I have another story. I talked to this guy on social media. I met him on a dating app. <laughs> this is horrible. This is before I was married, obviously. This is before I was married. I got on a dating app and met this guy. We had great conversation for a week. We met. At the first date, he tells me that, which I guess I needed to know. I'm glad he did overshare, but I'm glad he did, that he was basically impotent because of an accident he had. And <laughs> he just... He was not able to have children in a regular way. So he would need a woman that was willing to do something that was a little bit more alternative or progressive to have a child. All this on the first date. <laughs> I was overwhelmed and quickly excused myself and ran. Like, I, you know, and I think eventually he probably would meet a woman that may like him enough to go through all that. But he didn't allow me to even get to know him. Thank him. I'm thankful that he didn't because <laughs> I didn't want to deal with that. But even if a woman would be willing to, if she gets to know you and likes you, she may be open. But when you tell a person as soon as you sit down over appetizers that you were in an accident and have metal rods in your body and are impotent, that is just a lot to share before dinner. I would not want it to know that. What if you, so I think, do you find beauty in somebody telling you whatever could be a flaw in your eyes? Mm -hmm. I, again, I just think it's with time. I don't think it has to happen all on that first date. I just don't think that it's appropriate to share every flaw initially because they're a stranger. I think as we move from stranger to friend to date, then that's where the sharing comes. Telling a person that, you know, you went through a traumatic situation when you were five on a first date, it's just a lot. I don't like that. I don't think that anybody comes to any new relationship as their full self right. immediately. And so I don't think it's that you are, I think saying that you're hiding who you are is the wrong way to think about it. I think y'all are growing mm -hmm. in ways that allows you to be your full self. And so if you are in something where that is going to, that's, that's where that path is going to end. Right. Why is there this artificial first date timeline of if we're going to build, we have, we, that implies time, right? Like, and so you would think that if it's a third date and that you have been growing more comfortable, then those questions can come up. Like, Naturally. and it doesn't feel to me that anything is lost from first date to third day. Like, it's unclear to me what, is the big deal. I'm like, I'm like, you need to, if, if, if you know you don't want to be with someone who has family members or has Trump supporters or supports Trump themselves, and that person shares that, I think it's totally fine to find that disqualified. I think if that is a value to you, that's important to you. But I think like crawfish, <laughs> I, you know, I'm just saying, like, I'm saying stuff under that. I think that Trump means a lot of stuff. Voting in politics means a lot of stuff. And so I'm saying, if someone wants to say that, like, I care about this so much, I totally understand it. But I care, but I think the opposite is true too. If people want to say that they don't care about it, I understand that also. Mm -hmm. And I think that, like, as long as you are being transparent about who you are, that prop, that's okay by me. Right. And so I'm saying, but if, the artificial timeline is what I'm saying is the problem because you can't get a real answer that way. You know, not only that, it's just like, okay, look at the friendships that we have. I have friends that have voted for different for both parties. Right. right. I'm still friends with them because we had a relationship. And now that we have not like a you vote for Biden means I want to be your friend. Right. <laughs> right? We, like, we, it doesn't have a disagreement, the right answer to it yeah. because I like you and we have things in common. We may disagree in this area, but we have so many, things yeah. in common elsewhere it doesn't matter when you first meet a person the glaring the differences are glaring so you telling you giving me five things that we have it, that are different on the first date i may judge that differently than if i get five things that we have different right. on a fifth date like give me a chance to get to know you so that i can decide is that a deal breaker for me or not my friends that we vote differently they're not not going to be my friends even people i have friends that are different religious backgrounds like but we've come to those points with other foundation that is stronger than that so i think i don't think a relationship is going to be based on your political to me, what matters is that you care about 
the person. If it, if it matters to me, like whether you care about something, whether your passion is in something, whether that that can be politics, that can be other things, that can be. Uh, there's a lot of ways to answer that question. Just in the same way, when people say what their vote symbolizes, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can fulfill that. So maybe you're a Trump supporter and you still care about people in a different way, or you're a Biden supporter who doesn't, or the inverse, right? And so I'm saying there wouldn't be a way to know that unless what you're looking for is the value rather than who you voted for. And I'm not going to find out whether you like the type, whether you like poor people from one date, right? I'm not going to find out the value that matters to me. Right is whether that box is checked or you care about people I came from. I'm like, that stuff has to come with time anyway. So why am I, why am I putting you in a box about who you voted for? I don't think it's a box, though. I, I, like, I just think it's just necessary information that needs to be progressed later on. Progressed later on. I don't think that you have mm -hmm. to have a 90-minute a, a conversation about something. Um, you know, such as, you know, religion or politics. But I think to know where somebody is at gives you an idea of, okay, cool, I would like to see why they think this or, or you know, what is their opinion on that? Um, maybe at another time. I do think that it's important to know exactly what you're getting yourself into, especially when you're talking about dating one date, two date. Well, the first, I, to me, the first date and the third date are damn near the same. Um, so... And what, what? I mean, like, because you're still, it's still an introductory. You, right? you, you, I, most, more people have first dates that don't go to second dates than third dates. Like, yeah. if I've spent the time to go out with you three times, I know that I, there could be, but first yeah. date, I may not ever yeah, see you again. but it's like, you can get the questions out that you need. Like, you need to know the answers. You need to know your deal, your deal breakers. Mm -hmm first date so you don't waste no time so that's where i don't agree that the first date is like the third date because things i would have wanted to know on the first date that yeah. could have saved me yeah. Yeah. two yeah. dates yeah i'm asking the first date yeah. so, and honestly yeah. some of those things i know before we go on first date right like okay. you can also at this point like if if, it, if i know okay. that um uh i'm looking for x type of person right like at, at, you know social media other things i'm i'm feeling like i could at this point if you meet online if you meet through friends You've already understood some things about one another, too. And so I'm saying you can weed out in a lot of ways that if we're hanging out by a third time, I do think it's fair to be like, have some questions and expect answers. Yeah, yeah. yeah but we've had this. So here's my thing, right? And, and I'm only speaking from my experience. We've had many times where a guy comes out and tells a girl who he is once she falls for him and mm -hmm. then she gets upset. Why didn't you tell me this up front? Why, why did you have to wait till I like you for you to drop the baggage on me, right? And I'm speaking from, like a guy's, from a guy's standpoint, you know? I'm pretty sure women have done the same. But when that happens, then it's like, well, who's really that fault? Was I supposed to volunteer information or were you supposed to ask the necessary questions? And then it's like, well... I think the baggage size matters here. Well, I mean, some again, like it also know, depends on what just, their passion is, yeah. you know. So, no. like, what if she was a stripper? A man will say that he's just dating, but realistically, he has someone that believes yeah. that they're in a relationship. Yeah. Now, he may have not given her the verbiage. Yeah. Does anyone think they're dating? Right. You? So that, that's what I started asking. That's like, good does question. anyone believe that you all are in a relationship? And then he they, says, I don't know. They're like, I mean, I can't, <laughs> yeah, like, I can't I control know. what <laughs> she thinks. Right. I can't control what she thinks. Then as a woman, you got to know he's on some BS and that's on you. Like, you know, if he that's tells you, uh, right, I think right. you should assume, in my opinion, there's probably one to 5% of people who are single and not speaking to anyone. Right. Yeah. And, and so like, like, yeah, I, I just feel like like that part is a little bit different. But if she thinks that you guys are in a relationship, that's different. But some people, again, can conflate a whole entire situation. Now, what my thing is somebody like this. I spoke to a girl at one time, at one point in my life, and she said that she was Muslim. And if we were going to actually get married, I would have to convert. Yeah, this happened to me. And that is something that I would have liked to know in the beginning right. because she actually well, told me on the first date. You see, yeah, she did. And yeah. you were able to say yes or no. You know what I mean? I'm uh, assuming no. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, I remember thinking, 
Oh, okay. Because <laughs> that's pretty big. I don't want to be a Muslim, yeah. so I can't marry you. So well, I hadn't I can't thought do. about. I hadn't yeah. thought. I hadn't yeah. thought. Well, I feel like from a, like that's pretty big. If you know that that's what you're getting into, dating anyone that's mm-hmm. not Muslim, I think that it is only fair that you yeah. tell. I think them I think yeah. I totally that. understood wild, why it was a thing that is said the first time. I was saying. Oh, oh, I was just saying, I was just receiving the information. Yeah, that <laughs> person <laughs> tried to get you. But like, but yeah, that, that's but like here's the thing. Considered thing. It? My, one of my best friends did. Really? <laughs> he converted. He's a Muslim to this day. He's been married See, for 10 I years. See, I bet he liked her enough to do that. He didn't also care about religion. Right. 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 It's like, all right, I'll participate in this and I'll, I'll do the practices because to me, it's not a deal breaker. Now, for somebody like myself and yeah. clearly Ested, <laughs> it was like. Um, my dad's a pastor. I was like, oh. I got to at least have multiple this isn't the first day. like yeah. happen. We gotta go through levels of conversation. Yeah, I don't even know about the religion yet, right? Like, it's always like, <laughs> it's always like it was just funny. It was, but like, to your point, it's a big thing. And so, if that's thing. a thing that you want and you want in your life, I totally understood why it was something that she said. And we are cool, <laughs> you know. You know what? It's so interesting because cool. I, so I, I I do reporting on Ready to Love. Right, that's a dating show on own. And one of the questions that came came up was, should a woman reveal? Because a lot of guys are like, okay, I'm dating, but I eventually want to have children. If a woman has children, should she tell a guy on a first date that she is not able to have children? Right. So if you go out with a girl on the first date and she's and and she has had her tubes yes. tied, is that information that she should tell you on the first date? I will disclose if I like you enough. Yeah, like if, if we're if talking about... If, if I'm still just talking to a stranger trying to figure out if I like you, I'm not telling you that. Because that's something really important to me. That's probably right. something that's fucked me up. Yeah, I'm not telling you that. If yeah. I really decide that I like you and mm-hmm. I want to move forward, yeah. then yeah, I'll disclose that information. Yeah, but again, I, and then, then we get to this point where it's stringing somebody else along. Maybe you might not like them, but this person is falling for you by the day. And now you decided that you finally liked them three months later. <laughs> like, and it's like, hey, by the way, none of my business. <laughs> I can't have kids. It's none of my I business. I think if you're a dude going into a date and kids is a priority for you, okay, like that's okay for you to say or what if something. It's not like a priority. That? It may not be a priority to you. If you are 31 years old as a man, kids may not be a priority to you at 31. But if you get involved with this woman and end up getting married to her, kids could be a priority to you at 35 or 40. And she's not telling you that she's not able to have children or vice versa. I'm saying if you are in something and y'all have talked about kids, that seems to be the appropriate time to bring that up. You know, yeah, like, is, omitting, <laughs> is omitting like, so let's say they don't bring it up, is omitting and just kind of like breezing over it um, kind of like a red flag if you were to, you know, find out later on down the line. If breezing over it, if it was mentioned, that's kind of shady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. if the topic never came up and I just did not tell you, mm-hmm. then it's not really omitting. That I topic know. never came up. This is a first date. Yeah. We have many dates and we have many right. layers. Opportunities. To, yeah. He's to not a good vetter. If if I like <laughs> you, can, if I'm dating you and let's just say date one to five, I didn't ask you, how many kids do you see yourself having? Yeah. Or like, and you, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm clearly a bad dater. But what, if, you know, but what if she says, I don't necessarily want any more children? That still says that she can have more. It's difference between mm-hmm. I don't want any more and I can't have any more. Yeah, she, and she can actually things. still answer that question without telling you. That's what I'm that, that's my point. She, what if she wants to adopt? Yeah. What if she's already decided? Yeah, that's that... not fair. Um, I like, so <laughs> when I was younger and I dated older women, mm-hmm. the one thing I liked about older women was they were very much like, direct yes. this is what i like this is what i don't like mm-hmm. this is what i would want and this is how i want to live yeah. and it it was beautiful because it's like when i was dating girls my age and my younger 20s it's like i had to figure you out and ask all the appropriate questions so you don't omit or so i can actually see if you are going to lie or whatever the case may be and i think that for me it always worked better that way which is why i'm a direct person when it comes to dating i think direct actually works better in all areas because you're going to be able to weed them out very soon. Yeah, I I did. I don't want an exclusion. Like if you're just dating and I think people should do this. I think you should date to collect data. If you're just collecting data, then it's not really, you're just enjoying the moment. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to get married and you really want a life partner, then you, then you, you should be direct. Yeah. I mean, um, for our podcast, the run up, we went to a speed dating event in Pennsylvania and we talked to people about when they bring up dating sometimes. 
And what was interesting was that that is already a self-selecting group. If you're going to go to a speed dating event, you're not trying to, we- you want to have an in real life interaction. Mm-hmm. And I think that's actually the biggest change that's happened in dating is it's not just uh, uh, games. It's that the whole thing is kind of gamified. It's swipey. It's Instagrammy. <laughs> It's transactional. (laughs) It's all of those type of things. And so I'm saying, yeah, I think that's more direct. Mm -hmm. Like transactional is more direct. But that's not, but that's not all good either. The con, I think, is you weed out people who need to grow, right? I I was talking about myself. Like, you don't, I'm not, wasn't like born ready to be in a relationship, (laughs) right? right? Like, so even if that's something I wanted, if I was honest with myself, like, that's not some that's something I had to grow into, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you are weeding out people who also need that growth, who they would have weeded you out too, which is exactly. fine. But so I'm saying, like, so maybe that's that maybe that maybe y'all didn't have to grow. But I think if you didn't, you're not honest with yourself. And you're right? also yeah. probably missing out on great people. But I don't think that that's mm-hmm. that's 20s. That's mm-hmm. nobody that's, knows what the hell. Yeah, doing. like that's <laughs> growth in general. I think that's a lot of masculinity and like learning how to grow and all that stuff. So I'm saying. I, I, I'm just willing to say up. it. I don't think anybody is going to show up. And I think that's one of my biggest things that I write about with women. Like you have to understand there are not these fully complete, amazing men with that are completely emotionally mature, completely um, financially sufficient, have great credit scores and are ready to get married immediately and look amazing and have amazing sex. Like th- th- that's that doesn't exist. People are all in a state of growth. You're in a state of growth. And you may not know what your growth is right now. You may realize that later. But but having this idea that this is yes, you should have standards and you should know what you want. But I think checking people off by numbers and not allowing yourself to kind of get to know people and learn is really dangerous because you're gonna miss out on some amazing people that may grow in different areas like if you and and if you have a great person that crop that that completes 60 percent of what you want and they're working actively working actively working on the other part that things could be totally different in another few years i just think we have to be realistic about who we are because none of us are at 100 percent. and you also know that you don't you don't fully know what you need either right right and so your checklist is not actually a complete checklist. Right. And so willingness to see people who maybe don't fill all of those boxes mm-hmm. might also shape you into learning different things that you may not have been at the start. And so I'm like, what is also lost is, is imagine being the same person with the same checklist from 20 <laughs> to 35. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. that's what's lost you're the same person yeah like having a checklist that doesn't really relate to you it's what you think you're supposed to have. you've never taken the time and so you've never listened enough to do that girl you know you know i think that humans at this day and age are so scared of rejection that we rather not tell the person that we're in a place where we understand that we need to grow mm-hmm. and that i feel like is the bigger issue because we have this fomo yeah Right. I I don't want to miss out on this person. So let me do what I have to do and omit what I may. I think that's a big change in in even friends and like male friends of mine. I do think like rejection, putting yourself out there, dating requires vulnerability, like requires actually that she might not like you back, that you might actually not, you know, like, and I think that stuff can is harder. I think people are less willing to do that. I think. And so I, I do think that it's like a thing that's in the air, but to your point about growth, it requires some hard things to admit to yourself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's the, that's how, that's yeah. the barrier. Yeah, I, I, and I agree. And that's, so I think the key to dating is not fearing being disqualified. Because the people who are going to actually decide that I'm going to take you serious, irregardless to where you're at right yeah. now, is the person that's really trying to hopefully help you get to that next point in your life. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um... I believe that when you don't display who you are, you're robbing yourself because realistically you can get this person to like you and this person might keep you in the same spot for the next 10 years, Mm -hmm. right? And however, if you were just being transparent with your beliefs, your views and just where you are, and it does take a lot of self-work because you have to be able to recognize what it is that you need to work on. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. If I tell you that, you know, for example, 
if I tell you that my credit is bad, I know it needs to be worked on. Right. It's a, it's a proven thing. It's 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 concrete, and you might be the person to help me do that. Right? You may be the person that's saying I'm not willing to do that, but you weren't going to be willing to do it later either. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that when we start to actually just embrace where we're at in our lives at that moment with whoever we're dating. We can actually weed out the people who are willing to actually help us get to that next level and hopefully be that partner that has a long term, or we could just let us like, be lost. I don't them. agree with. I don't when someone agree with when that. someone comes out when 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 you know when a girl comes over your house and you put on some music, you don't put on just anything in your library. Nice. You put on a thing that you want to show for yourself mm -hmm. as a thing you want to. Live. That doesn't mean yeah. that what else is in that library you're hiding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That just means that you are putting mm -hmm. what you want and you're considering what the other person might want too. Yeah. And so I'm like, it doesn't feel to me that like you are, you are, it, it means that those parts don't exist. And at some point, you know, whenever that song does come on, they might look at you funny, right? Like I'm saying, whenever, whenever this does show a different part, you know, all of that type yeah. of stuff too. So I'm saying it doesn't feel one or the other. It feels like uh, uh, showing yourself um, and ways you want to be received. One thing that I think that I resonated with and I know others here resonated with on both of your behalfs is that you were saying that someone should have an updated checklist and Crystal, you were saying... They should have like a realistic checklist. I think a lot of times, specifically women, we can be unrealistic with what we want. Because we, we like, you know, we like the fantasy of it and I think men can be more irrational. But I think what I tell women is if you have a list of more than five, you need to cut your list down and focus on the inside, the characteristics, the the things that you want in a potential partner, like what qualities, what personality, what character traits. Those are the most important things. And then you can go after anything else we can work on. But the character and who they are as a person is not going to change. So I think mm -hmm. that is the core of what we need to be looking for when we come to date, when it comes to dating. Yeah. I mean, I think that having a, a, a clear view of what your priorities are mm -hmm. and communicating that never goes wrong. If you do it with respect and honesty. And, and I think that does not have to be at a quick timeline or not, but I think it, it, it being true, you know, trying to say where you are, um, I think it's often received well. Yeah. But at the same time, I think if politics, if, if dating, if, if building a, a financial success, if all of those things are values for you, mm -hmm then I think you need to put yourself in position to attract those people and for them to see you as attractive too. That, and that so, cause you can't only like people who want one of those things and you haven't, you know, you can't want Savannah and not be LeBron, you know? <laughs> and so I'm like, you have to put yourself in a position to have that person. Yeah. And so I think that it's fair to say, what am I looking for? Mm -hmm. But I think you should also think, um, what am I bringing to the table? I love that. So let's actually end on that note. Crystal, and instead, I would love for you to tell the audience where they can find you before we close out. Okay. Well, you guys can find me on YouTube at From Crystal uh, with Love XO and on Instagram at The Real Crystal Jordan. And you can get a copy of Dear Alpha Female It's Not Him, It's You on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, or wherever books are sold. Thank y'all for having me again. Um, you can find me at EstedWH on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, you should follow our podcast, The Run Up. You can find it anywhere you find uh, music or podcasts or the New York Times audio app. And you can catch me on CNN where we will be following this election all the way to the end and trying to do it in a way that recognizes uh, just how hard this is going to be for all of us. Well, thank you both for coming and joining us today. I loved our conversation. Absolutely. Um, now, everybody who are watching, please like, subscribe, and keep on sharing. We need the support, and we appreciate the support because we're doing this for you as well. And we'll see you next time here at 8 at the Table.